Good morning oh, to the house. Oh. Good morning to my fans. Oh. They're gonna hear this breaking news. Oh. This one is coming oh, from a U.S. congressman. Look at what uh, he got to say about the health issues of Mazen Namdekano. He said, and I quote, Why the government pl planning to buy Namdekano, U.S. congressman? This is our top headline for this morning broadcast. In case you never subscribe to my channel, please endeavor to do that as soon as possible. Turn on the notification button so that you'll be notified this time we go live or post something on this channel or another channel related to Hooted Daily Talk. You are wondering who is here. I am that your broadcaster with a difference or with a swag. I'm Andy Aneze from the platform of Ukute Daily Talk, bringing to you this early Thursday morning broadcast. In case this is your first time of hearing my voice and you never subscribe to my channel, this is the right time for you to do that. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you share, and make sure you comment and like any of my content. It is very, very important and it's very, very necessary. Make this video, let it go viral because the uh, government or the government of the Fulanis are planning to buy Mazen Namdekano in DSA detention camp. That is the news we got early this morning. So please, my dear friends in the house, those who know what I'm doing and those one who have the interest of their friends at heart or who have the interest of Mazen Namdekano at heart, please make this video, let it go viral. Share it from one person to the other, like bringing two people to bring another two people and bring another two people. That's what it didn't take be. So without not taking much of a time, please, uh, I want us to do what? To go straight to the reason why we are here. Please, do not tell the die. I am here with you. The representative of a state of Texas, District 139 in the United States, U.S. House of Representatives, Jarvis uh, Johnson has accused the President Muhammad Buhari-led administration of plotting to buy the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Maze Namdekano. Johnson, in a letter to the U.S. Congress, appealed to his colleagues to intervene urgently and urge the Nigerian government to release the detained leader of the Biafran group. Johnson's letter, which was dated on the May 10, 2023, and Matt reply, appeal for your urgent intervention in urging the government of Nigeria to release Namdekano from his extraordinary rendition, was made available on Thursday by the special counsel to IPOB leader Aloy Ejimako. The U.S. congressman said the IPOB leader had traveled to Nairobi, Kenya on the May 12, 2021 as a British citizen and was legally admitted and that on June 19, 2021, agents of the Nigerian government abducted him, tortured him for eight good days before his illegal rendition back home to Nigeria. The question is, what have U.S. government done about this? Even I'm, I'm applying the United Nations Working Committee on, on, on arbitrary detention itself, they, they say something. UK have not said anything. UK are given reasons that before they interfere the case, it will need two years before. What if that person died before that two years? Can't you see that these people, they know the truth, but they refuse to say. Because, hey, it's gone, or maybe they have increased their number of crude oil in their, their siphoning from Nigeria uh, uh, territory. Johnson said, there is now growing fear and concern that the Muhammad Buhari led administration intends to buy or cause Kano's disappearance before May 29. When it plans to hand over power to the incoming administration, May 29 is here, is here already. Let us keep watch. For most now, it is public knowledge that Kano's health condition has deteriorated. He suffered from a serious heart condition and other ailments for which he is not getting enough medical attention or treatment. Appeal to the Nigerian government to release the IPOB leader dated back to June 27 of 2021. He said, Kano's persecution by the Nigerian government intensified in 2015 when he, Kano, visited Nigeria from London, the United Kingdom, and he was arrested and uh, detained. First few days after his arrival on October 14 of 2015, he was arrested in Lagos by agents of the Nigerian government. He was held in solitary confinement by the Department of State Service DSS uh, ultimately. He was granted bail by the Nigerian courts after spending two years. After his release, he resided prim uh, uh, primarily in his ancestral home in Abia State, Afro Ibe Kuku, Nigeria, 
with his parents, siblings, and other extended family members. On October 10, 2017 to October uh, 14, 2017, the Nigerian military attacked and invaded his home. In the process, dozens of people were killed. Many were injured and maimed, while many others were captured alive and have disappeared. Till today, the government of the day have not given any explanation of what happened. The United uh, Working Committee of the United Nations have not said anything. Neither do the European Union or even US or UK interfere on this matter. Everything is do what is being given a silent look because it have a lot to do with the black race. One is Nigeria and also the Igbos. The most doing well people that you can find in the Nigerian government or in the ABI or whatever is the Igbos. Let me tell you the gospel truth. They know what we have in us. They know that the, the kind of brand that Igbos have is that of the same with the, the Israel. If they leave us, we will conquer the whole world. Not even only Nigeria, not even only Africa. Igbos will conquer the whole world. That is why they dare not let Igbos go. They know what they are doing. Fortunately, Kano escaped the invasion and returned to his London residence to, to reunite with his nuclear family. On May 12th of 2021, he traveled to Nairobi, Kenya as a British citizen and was legally admitted into that same country. On June of 19, 2021, he was abducted by the agents of the Nigerian government. He disappeared in Naira, Ubi and was tortured by, uh, for eight days, Johnson laments in his letter to the Congress House. Tunumbu, Atikut Kampo, they don't speak on who will decide May 29. Swearing in. Let us see what Atiku Campo have to tell us. A chieftain of the People's Democratic Party PDP and spokesperson of Atiku Abubakar Presidential Campaign Organization, Mr. Daniel Boala, has said only God knows who will be sworn in on May 29. No, not only God knows. We all know that they are swearing in Shetima, not Tunumbu. We know that the Kabas have used Tunumbu as a front runner, but indirectly, who will rule the country? For the past four years before we can talk about another election is Shetima. Uh, Shetima. Uh, 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 what did they call himself? Shetima. Nigerian News reports. Wala made no, this known in a post via Twitter on Wednesday stating that there is a case at the Supreme Court scheduled for judgment this Friday regarding the presidential election. According to the PDP chief then, Irrespective of the scheduled judgment at the Supreme Court, Nigeria must do what they must succeed. He noted that many supporters of the All Progressive Congress (APC) always insinuating him, okay, always insulting him, were his greatest fan when he was in the party. Buala added that he understand the supporters' emotions and despite their towns, towns, the president select Bola. Tunumbu appreciates his loyalty to the party. He wrote, by May 29th, there will be a swearing-in ceremony. As for who will be sworn in, only God knows, because there is a case at the Supreme Court scheduled for this Friday for judgment. Whichever way it goes, Nigeria will succeed. That is the democracy we all ordered. 99% of Aswaji supporters abusing me here We are my greatest fans when I was in APC, I can perfectly understand your emotions and I am not mad at you. That is why it is, it is, it, it, it is too risky to be jumping from one party to the other, like Ashawo. <laughs> Till tomorrow, as well as you appreciate my loyalty and support when I was in APC, I am okay with that. In other words, my dear, this is your statement. You are just dangling. Very soon now, you will defend back to APC. We know you. <laughs> We are, we are going to go wear the flag because after this uh, court case now, if your, your master, be your payments or your principal do not get, get anything, he will go back to Dubai and that is the end of Trobon Grandi because he will not contest again. Uh, you are in the maximum of contest where person go feel contest. If you know win, my dear, let him go to his Dubai home. He is uh, ruling us. He wants to rule us from Dubai. Just like the outgoing president. He said uh, if we disturb him, he will go back to the jail. That means he's a Niger man. We know all these things. I think he's a Cameroonian man. <laughs> While I let it finish. Meanwhile, pending the rule of the Supreme Court, Tunumbu is scheduled to be sworn in on May 29, 2023, which is uh, on Monday.
We are uh, getting closer to the truth. We ke umaye are men of honor and integrity. You don't pray these people. We ke kill Biafrans. Umaye, the same thing. They are men of integrity. I am surprised you didn't mention that uh, Supreme Court uh, governor, Governor Hope, who's a danger, in this your uh, 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 right up. Because they agree to kill their own people. They agree to, ma to, 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 to massacre the people. In Obu Ibo in Portagoto, we can massacre the, the, the Biafrans. And you are praising him. They are men of integrity and honor. Ado, integrity, my food. The vice president select, Senator Kashim Shetima, has described governors in yes, some week of rivers and his Boy State counterpart, Devo Mahe, as men of honor and integrity. Shetima appreciated both governors for their contribution and support. For all the progressive uh, Congress uh, APC during the 2023 presidential elections. He made this known on Wednesday while addressing a group of senators, backing senators, Goswil Akpabio and Barao Jibril, as Senate President and Deputy Senate President in the 10th National uh, Assembly by his campaign office in Abuja. Shetima shared, said Wike and Omahe have contributed immensely to the stability of the country and are two of the best performing governors in the country as of today. He said, the governor general of the South-South is a man of honor and integrity. Whatever you see is what you get as far as Wike is concerned. These are people that have contributed immensely to the stability of this country. Umai is the best performing governor in the Southeast. He is a man of honor and integrity. He wanted to contest for the Senate leadership, but he had to drop in to reverence to the party's decision. The vice president elect or vice president elect promised to get in touch with the ABC senators elect who are yet to come on board with the choice of the parties. According to Ari Sharif Chetima, he said, I have seen the names of those who are yet to join us. The rest are short that we will positively engage them and make them see the reasons why they have to come on board. My principal, Aswaji Barame Tunumbu, is a veteran politician. He knows how to go about bringing them into the fold before the inauguration of the National Assembly. According to Ali Sharif Setima, presidential election tribunal don't expect magic from judiciary. Chede uh, Odenkalo, 10 Nigerians. We know that... Uh, they, they have been bought over, so there's no two ways about that. Uh, we know that uh, most of the P2B and the PDP and other uh, political parties are wasting their time at the tribunal. We, have, we don't have faith in them because they have made some wrong decisions and judgments of recent, which have made all the whole Nigerians to lose their faith and sleep or grip over the decision of the court or whatever. Nigerians uh, have been told not to expect any magic judgments from the ongoing election petition tribunal in Abuja. Nigeria reported that this was the position of former chairman of Nigeria's uh, National uh, Human Rights Commission, Professor Chidi Odenkalo. Odenkalo submitted that anyone who is expecting magic from the tribunal should read the Supreme Court judgment on the state government election petition. It was gathered that from the Sahara reporter that the human rights lawyer on Wednesday said the Appeals Court has already uh, predetermined the outcome of the major cases through an unrealistic stand, uh, standard of proof by demanding that whoever claims that there was election manipulations must produce all the bimodal voter accreditation system Beavers machine used for all the affected polling units. He submitted that those expecting some form of magic from the Nigeria judiciary in election dispute resolution should read the judgment in also state governorship case. The Supreme Court says to prove in results have been manipulated you need to produce each beaver's machine for the affected polling unit. So if you are alleging manipulations of results in 1,000 polling units, you must produce 1,000 beaver's machine, one for each polling unit. Meanwhile, these cases are decided in courthouses, not warehouse. The court may just have a, a, a pre predetermined the outcome of the major cases through an unrealistic standard of proof. That's exactly the point we are trying to make here. Think of it this way. To prove I have sent you an SMS, it is not enough for you to get 
the network provider to certify that uh, certify what transpired. You must produce the phone from which the SMS was sent. The quality of uh, judicial uh, decision making in the election dispute is utterly diabolical. Chindo de Carlo have said it all, my dear brother. He noted that the Supreme Court had an e judgment in our soon state governorship election petition held at the Beavers devices for each of the 744 polling units which the appellants solely relied on as the basis for grounds two and three of their petition were not produced and tendered by them as an evidence in support of their cases. Rather, they sought to prove, pro prove the record of accredited voters in the Beavers devices for each of the 744 polling units by means of a report of examination of INEC database or back on the server said to contain the information on the number of accredited voters and number of voters cast in a polling unit transmitted by the beavers to the INEC database during the election on the election day. The record in the beavers machine for each polling unit is the direct and primary record of the number of voters accredited in that polling unit on the election day in the process of the election or selection processes. It is not in this put that the dispute pulling a uh, 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 disputed the polling units results were collated in their respective wards by the award collation officers. The collation by virtue of Regulation 48 Subsection uh, A of INEC Regulations and Guidelines Supra, a presumption arises from the collation of the polling units results that the number of accredited voters recorded in the results in the form ECHA agrees with the record of accredited voters in the beavers. So it is the number of accredited voters recorded in the beavers that the number of accredited voters recorded in the result are uh, uh, in form ECHA must be compared with or verified from to determine if there was manipulations in the result of the election. Recall that the People Democratic Party PDP and Labour Party and their presidential candidates Atik Abubakar and Obi respectively are challenging the victory of the present select Bola in the February 25th uh, uh, presidential polls that take over and was manipulated according to the news that we got here. Um, here we have another one. Oh, this one is the full list of governors, deputies under EFCC's investigation. When and how? The answer is we will not disturb ourselves because these people are not doing anything. Rather than Chasing after Yahoo boys. Uh -huh. This one said they are in their radar. Even during the time of election, they said there is a number of EA, uh, governors and uh, uh, deputies or, or parliamentaries that they are investigating that uh, uh, dumped cash. I mean, this old Naira cash when they were want to swap the 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 the, the, the new Naira the design. They say they are monitoring them, and we wait to even up to now they are still monitoring them. Election is over. They have do the deposit finish. Nobody is being arrested. Nobody is being prosecuted. We had about somebody, a governor in the in the northeast, storing about twenty two billion naira in cash in his private home. Till today, the EFCC have not come out and tell us look at their findings about that allegation, and nobody ever come out to deny such allegation. Now you are monitoring the uh, governors uh, in their investigation list. <laughs> uh, this one is a joke, a total joke. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission (EFCC) is initiating expensive uh, or expansive uh, investigations into the governors and their deputies who are soon to lose their immunity from prosecution as they have as they leave office, according to a reliable source that spoke with Premium Times. An internal memo reveals the EFCC scrutiny extends to at least 28 governors and their deputies in a country with a six-stage. Each governor is governed by a governor. Uh, and deputy due. A team of the governors, along with the deputies who are selected for ELCC scrutiny, are set to step down when they complete their second terms in office on May 29. Another governor will also exit office after serving a term on the same date, while 10 others are selected to serve a second term following recent elections. A comprehensive investigation is being undertaken with the EFCC asking for the asset declaration forms of these officials from the Code of Conduct Group, CCB,
according to an official communication between the two agencies seen by the platform. However, the agency indicated in a letter to the CCB chairperson, Mohammed Issa, that it requires these asset declaration documents to support an ongoing investigation involving the aforementioned officers. The ESCC letter dated April 11, signed on behalf of the ESCC chair, Adrashid Bawa, includes a list of governors and deputies who assumed office in either 2015 or 2019. The agency requested asset declaration forms submitted at the beginning and the end of their current tenure for uh, tenure, current tenure for these details. So, as we are moving forward, the asset declaration documents are invaluable, invaluable resource for investigations. However, serving presidents, vice presidents, governors and deputy governors in Nigeria are immune from criminal prosecutions, limiting the ESCC and other anti-corruption agencies to preliminary investigations. List of governors under their investigations are as follows. Please listen attentively as we do what, as we call their names. The outgoing, of, uh, outgoing governor of Zafra State, Belo Metawale and his deputy, Hassan Gusau, are among the 28 governors under the ESCC's investigations. The extensive list also includes notable names like River State Governor, Jason Wike, I know he'll be involved, Abdullahi Ganduje, Abubaka Bagudu, Abubaka Belo, Samuel Otom, and Babajide Sanwolu. See the full list of governors and their deputies below. These are the people who the ESCC claims that they will investigate. All the investigations in the past governors have not seen anyone being prosecuted. After all, uh, Rosa Tokrosa was humiliated, broke into his house, do all sorts of things. The next day, he came back to his house and continued living. He stole 2.1 billion. When they catch him, investigate him, he transferred 1 billion to them and the case closed. That is why you see all these people now, if they want to thief, they thief a substantial amount of money so that when you probe them, highest, you collect half of it and they will continue living large. Yes, not minding uh, the, the allowances they get, even as a past governors and ministers on the, on monthly basis, and even uh, they still get newspaper, uh, uh, what they call it, newspaper uh, allowance, even when out of office. Their cars are being changed uh, every three, three years with new tier nylon bulletproof cars. Nigeria, no get money, but all these things is the scandalization of that same money that they went out there to borrow on our way down. Number one in their list is that uh, 500 naira uh, uh, governor. If you remember, the one that brought only Chicken Republic in other state for his eight years tenure in office. He brought only Chicken Republic and he was voting about it. He built one kilometer uh, uh, flyover and he was voting about it. He is number one on the list. With his de deputy, Governor Okezi Ipazu, with the deputy Uche Oko Chuku. Another two, number two on our list here is Adamawa State. Governor Ahmed Fintiri, who does be re-elected after the shenanigans. And his deputy, Crowder, said. We have a governor of Akwaibon State, Udom Emmanuel. His deputy is Moses Ubo, or be Moses Egbo. Number four on our list, we have Bauchi State, Governor Bala Mohammed. His deputy is Bala Tela. Benue State, Governor Samuel Autumn. And his deputy, Benson Abono. We come to number six here, Bronu State, will be Governor Babagana Zulum. With his deputy, Uma Kadafu. And we have Cross River here, Governor Benedict Ayade, the crying governor who never done anything for his, for his people. Always speaking English when he was asked a question. And his deputy, Ivara Esu. We have Delta State Governor, uh, Governor Ifanyo Kowa, with his deputy, Kinsley Otuaru. Then Ebo State is not uh, excluded. Where in MB, Governor Debu Mahe, and, and his deputy, Eric Igwe. Enugu State, Deamongo, Governor Ifanyi Ugwani, 
and his deputy, Cecilia Eze Ilo. They will get the governor of Gwombo State, Governor Mohamed Yaya, which is deputy Menesa Jatu. Then Jigawa State is uh, on the list with the governor, Mohamed Abubakar, his deputy, Uma Namadi. Governor of Kaduna State will be Governor Nasri Erufai and his deputy, Hadiza Balarabe. Kano State Kombodu will be Governor Abdullahi Ganduje and his deputy, Nasiri Gawuna. Katsina State Aminu Masari with his deputy will be Mania Yakubu. Then KB State Kombodu will be Governor Abubakar Bagudu. Then deputy, Samaela Dabai. Kwara State is included Governor Abdul Abdurrahman Abdurazak, Deputy Kayode Alabi, Lagos State Babaji Defan Wolu, and Deputy Femi Hamzat, Natural State Governor Abdullah Sule, and his Deputy Emmanuel Akabe, Governor of Niger State will be Governor Abuba Kabelo, Deputy Ahmed Kesto, Ogun State will be Governor Dako Abiodun. His deputy is Naimato Salako Oyedele. Governor of Oyo State will be Governor Uluwa Sei And the deputy Adebayo Lawal. Flat State Komo will be Simon Lalongo. And his deputy Sony Tajude. Governor of River State will be Governor Yesom Wike. And his deputy Epalibo Banigo. Then the governor of Sokoto State will be Governor Amino Tambua. PDP don't too much here. And his deputy, Mane Dan Eya. Taraba State is involved with be Governor Darius Ishaku, Deputy Haruna Manu. 28 Yobo State will be Governor May Ma Mala Buni and his deputy, Idi Gubana. The last year but not least, Governor of Damfara State will be Governor Belo Metawale. His deputy is not involved. <laughs> uh, well, I know they finish. So my wonderful people, my viewers and subscribers, all over the world. I don't know. Okay, I think we need to have one other news so that we can use the, to conclude the, 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 the rest of the news. Uh, and I know the way we used to do it, you. So that's all the thing take B. The last year, but not, not the least, ESCC arrest Enugu Klariki over alleged 5.4 million Naira flaw, uh, fraud, not flawed, sorry. A self aligned cleric in Enugu State, Apostle Udechuku Samuel, has been arrested and aligned by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, over his alleged involvement in fraudulent activities. The cleric, who was aligned before Justice H.O. Eya of the Enugu State High Court on Tuesday, allegedly converted a sum of 5,433,000 naira belonging to one Mr. Eugene. Onye Ebula Wanneya, Okonye Ebula Wanneya, to his personal use. How it happens is what we're about to find out. Apostle Samuel was said to have committed the crime in collaboration with one uh, Bisiriu, Oriyomi, who is now on the run or at large. Samuel was uh, uh, docked on seven count charges, bordering on stealing, conspiracy, and obtaining money by false pretense. He pleaded not guilty when all the charges were read to him. In a view of his plea, the prosecution counsel and Ike Chuku Michael asked the court to fix a date for the trial to commence. The court adjoined the defendant bail to bail and adjourned to July 4th and 5th, 2023, for a hearing. Uh, new uh, Niger News learned about the issue. Court Court one against Apostle, uh, count one against Samuel Apostle reads that you, Apostle Uchechuku Samuel and Mr. Bisiriyu Uriyomi, now at large, sometimes in 2019, in Enugu State, within the jurisdiction of this honorable court, conspired to commit a felony to which stealing by conversion and you thereby committed an offense. Contrary to and punishable under section 495 of the Criminal Code Law, CAP, that revised edition, Laws of Enugu State of Nigeria, 2004. Count 2 reads 
that you, Apostle Uchechuku Samuel, and Mr. Bisiriu, now at large, between 21st August 2019 and 17 December 2019, in Enugu, Enugu State, within the jurisdiction of this honorable court, did commit a felony to wit, stealing by fraudulently converting to your personal use an aggregate sum of 5 million naira, 435 naira, uh, being pro, uh, property of Mr. Eugene Onyebulo Onwenya, and you thereby committed an offense of stealing contrary to section 342 and 343 of the Criminal Code Law, Capital to Revised Edition, Laws of Enugu State, Nigeria, of 2004. And it is punishable under section 353, uh, subsection F and I of the same law. So, my good people of Biafra, my wonderful people, now here we go take back our kayao and I go with the go. So, please make sure you subscribe to my channel, like my content, and always share it with your family and friends. Until I come your way again, I still remain your one and the only who could daily talk. Please make sure that this video go viral because there's a lot of wisdom and a lot of things to learn from it. I cannot just uh, be giving you messages all the time with uh, with broadcasting, even uh, even uh, even at a uh, sick bed itself. I still make sure that I brought news to your doorstep. So, what is your own contribution to making this message go viral? Is for you to be sharing it each time you get any of my message on your uh, your, your notification uh, 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 board. Share it to your people. Share it with your families. Share it with your colleagues in the office. With your door, next door neighbors, they need to hear the message as well as you. So I don't know why you people will just keep on uh, uh, keeping this message to yourselves. It is meant for everybody, not for only one person. As you do this, may the Almighty to God bless you, prosper you, uh, enrich your pocket, and provide for you at the point of your need. And these are my prayers for all my fans every now and then. Have a nice day. I am signing out. Bye for now, my people. Que me siano.